But if Jesus is eternal, how can he be a son? Or if he was begotten, how can he be eternal? And that was always my question, okay? If he's eternal, how can he be a son? And I would ask so many people this, you know, after leaving Jehovah's Witnesses, and it was like, you know, they couldn't answer. Well, in what sense is he a son? They couldn't answer, but he is the son, you know? Well, how? And then when I was reading the early Christians, of course, they explained all this, and this is where we're going to start now. Okay, so they use the illustration of the sun in the sky, in the heavens, all right? So think of it, just think of this picture. Hebrews 1.3 says, And he, Christ, is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his, his meaning the Father, nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. Okay, so back looking at that picture again, okay? So they understood the Father to be the nucleus of the Son. And Hebrews says this, that the Son of God, Jesus, is the radiance. So do you see the radiance that comes out from the, the center of the Son? So that's Jesus. He's the radiance that comes out from the Father. The Father is the the mass of the sun itself, okay? So the sun is begotten, he's not made, and he's begotten in eternity. So let's, let's think how that's possible, okay? So he's begotten, in other words, the radiance or the light that comes from the sun, it's begotten, it doesn't come of itself. It has an origin, that origin is in the sun, the light, is begotten from the sun. Everyone, everyone understand that, okay? The light doesn't just start nowhere. It, it originates in the sun. It's, you could say it's begotten from the sun, all right? Now, we know the sun isn't eternal, but let's imagine that the sun up there in the heavens, that it is eternal. Imagine, imagine it has always existed. Okay, if it's always existed, what about the light that comes from it? the light would always exist too. You see, because it's coexistent. In other words, as it, the minute God created the sun, you immediately had light instantaneously. The, the, and so the Father is eternal. He has always been here. So the radiance from Him is eternal as well. In other words, as long as the Father's been here, then that radiance, the Son, you know, Jesus, is eternal as well. But Jesus is begotten. He, he, he is like the light from the sun. His origin is in the Father. If you don't have the Father, you can't have the Son. You can't have Jesus Christ. Because, you know, His origin is in the Father. He doesn't exist of Himself. He exists in the Father. D does that make sense? Okay. It, it's not, yeah, it was, it was so simple. I thought, wow, why have I never heard this? I've only heard the apple and the egg, and it's like... Yeah, which didn't explain anything. Yeah, this, this made sense. And then we're not going to talk very much about the Holy Spirit, but sometimes they'd say the Holy Spirit is like the heat that comes from the sun. The same, same principle is if the sun is eternal, then the heat that comes from it is eternal as, as well. Okay. So that's why you can be begotten and yet be eternal at the same time. Now here's another illustration that some people find uh, uh, easier to grasp, and, and both of them. So the other illustration they would use is that the Father is like a spring of water that, that bubbles up, okay? Jesus, the Son of God, is like a river coming out of that spring, okay, out of that pool, all right? So let me ask you the same question. If that spring, that pool of water, has always existed, then what about the river? The river's always existed. You, you see, it's co-eternal. In other words, but the river doesn't exist by itself. It, it's dependent on the spring of water that comes up. But if that spring has always been there, which the Father has always been there, then the river running off of it has always been there at the same time, okay? So that's why we can have a son of God, and yet he's eternal at the same time. Now, is there any difference between the 
nature of the water in that spring and the nature of the water in the river? No, not a trick question. No, it's the same thing. It's the same water. You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing. So we say Jesus has the same nature or substance as the Father. He's, he's not different. It, it's the same life. It's the same divinity that flows out of the Father in, into the Son. So he doesn't have a different divinity. He's not like a sub divinity or, or that. He has the exact same nature as the Father, just like that river would have the exact same nature as the spring. Okay, so the Father, and see, this is where most Western Christians, they don't, they don't understand. The Father is the source of the Trinity. They basically have a Trinity without a source that, yeah, it's just, all, it's always been there. Well, you don't really have, you have names, Father and Son, but you don't really have a father and you don't really have a son. But see, in the Orthodox, the correct understanding of the Trinity, yeah, you, you have a real father and you have a real son. The father is the father because he's the source of it. The, the life of the Holy Spirit and the son come from the father. Their being, their existence is in the father.